Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Donna Fiesel, and I'm your host of Afternoon Drive Home on IC in Christ Radio, your source for news and entertainment. You can also find us on television two different ways. Channel 182 on Charter Communications, which is in North Alabama. You can also find us on Abundant TV, which is found on Roku, Apple TV, Amazon Fire. And I didn't let Dave know this, but Dave, you're actually in Australia as well. So that was just connected wow. as well. So we're going to be talking with folks all over the country and and i'll have to tell you one of my one of my focuses is to have folks come to the state of alabama and begin their businesses if you're looking for an extension or expansion you won't put your headquarters somewhere else come to alabama because there's a number of different reasons you want to do that first of all the low cost of living taxes are much lower and i had dave can tell you about this dave heights with me and dave um, we've got the best workers here too, because they got absolutely, those- absolutely. We've got we're we're trying to fill a lot of the voids that we have in the workforce. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know the governor from all over the state of Alabama. Uh, manufacturing is booming here. Oh, it's huge. And uh, let's. I think uh, last Friday was Manufacturing Day, and we've got a lot of things going on here coming up uh, where we're going to be having some folks on campus um, to try to. Uh, build some more relationships, not just uh, not just here in uh, Jackson and DeKalb counties, but all over the state uh, to try to uh, employ some of our uh, students. Absolutely. So businesses, make sure you listen to this segment, okay? Northeast Alabama Community College. I'm such a cheerleader and in, in several reasons. Uh, one reason is the outreach you guys have into the community, which is awesome. And and I love you. I mean, it's in your heart to help students to get their Absolutely. degrees or to get their certificates. So let's talk about what you do there, Dave. Well, uh, my program is a uh, 76-hour Associate in Applied Science uh, degree. Mm-hmm. We also offer a certificate and a short-term certificate. Uh, hopefully, students will matriculate through the program uh, and collect those uh, credentials as they're working toward their associate in science. But um, we're seeing more and more uh, of our students uh, being offered employment uh, pr- prior to graduation, which is, a good, I mean, it's a good thing and a bad thing, uh, but uh, we're, tr- we're trying our best to uh, 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 mold uh people for the workforce that um, that's out there. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And the jobs are there. And yes. I have to tell you something, if you ever watch the show called This Old House, it's on PB. I love that show. We never miss a segment. And I love it because they're 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 rooting for the young folks to get these really good jobs, high paying jobs with a degree or a certificate either way. Well we're we're seeing a lot you, you have students that have this um I guess from when my parents were growing up at it, the successful folks tended, you tended to see them go to, to lean toward a four-year education and more and more we're seeing where uh, two-year associate degrees are, are outperforming the investment that's being made on, on, on four-year and not that a four-year degree is bad and by no means, sure. but as far as the return on the investment, uh, a two-year technical degree is is it, it's strong to argue those points and those benchmarks that you see when uh, students graduate and they're getting not only uh, uh, pre-graduation or graduation employment, but the the earning potential there is uh, extremely high. Uh, the industry is is pushing multi-skilled laborers. Mm-hmm. And whether it, whether you're working in and what we previously referred to as industrial maintenance or uh, machine tool or welding or or um, electrical, there there's so many different uh, skills there that our workforce is needing multi skilled areas. Um, uh, there's a prominent manufacturer that that they they. They the term megatronics is used quite often for these multi skilled laborers, uh, but being able to have being able to customize the the type of 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 worker that you're looking for is uh, kind of unique to what what we provide, 
And uh, with, with with my program being uh, engineering tech, just general engineering technologies, it doesn't have a primary focus. We touch on mechanical and electrical, but uh, there, there's uh, it, it's difficult to to share with students when they ask you, well, what will I be doing when I finish? Mm-hmm. It, it, it's uh, it's like looking into a crystal ball because they may be uh, working in a manufacturing facility on in, in safety or in quality, or the, on the other side of the coin, they may be working for the DOT uh, testing concrete on, on a construction project. So uh, we try to make sure that we provide them with the uh, with the skills that they need, and uh, it's. Um, it's something I know for me personally, uh, that's one of the reasons why I'm in education because making that connection with those students and seeing them be successful, that that's what, um, you know, we, you, 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 you don't see that on the paycheck. No, it, you don't. It's very, it's very fulfilling. It is. And I just wanted to add a couple of things to that too, because these jobs are very, now my dad was in the technical world. And, uh, and I'll have to tell you, I mean, we never went hungry. I mean, you know, <laughs> he, we always had, he always had a job. And I'll tell you the thing about him is, is when you go to work every day, you work hard, you do the things that are not necessarily on the job description. You know, we were raised, you know, pick up a broom and sweep. It doesn't, if you're the doctor, if you go and you decide you want to be a medical doctor, you're just sitting around, get a broom and sweep. I mean, just little things that show that you really care about your business that you're working for. And employers really look at that. And and that's how folks get, you know, that's how they get moved up in companies. I used to work for GTE and I was a commercial account executive. I went into, uh, it's just a fancy name for a salesperson. And so I would go (laughs) into into corporations, businesses and, and government accounts were my accounts. And so I would walk in, this is back in the day, this is when nobody had cell phones, okay? And so I would walk into, this is in the the 90s, early 80s, late 80s and 90s, I would walk into a manufacturing company, see this big banner would say, five days without an injury on the job, because that scared me to death, I'd be afraid to go in there. And I would look at (laughs) whoever had invited me to come by, and I would say, do I need a hard hat on? Because I just saw your banner right here. Those days are gone. There are manufacturing sure. companies that are as clean as a hospital now. Sure. Yeah, I, I can tell you, we 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 toured a facility um, this past week, and just walk, walking around in the facility, uh, the type of lighting that they use, oh, yeah. uh, the the lean manufacturing principles that they they utilize with five uh, AS, and there, there's just there's a lot of a lot of um, applications that they're using in everyday manufacturing that that lends itself to to not only a cleaner environment, but a safer environment for the employer and employee. And uh, it's it's a uh, win-win for the company and and the employee all the way around. Oh, it is. And the jobs are not, they're not those really, I mean, it's not like you're, you know, chopping rocks or something with it. I mean, right. th- these are like really, really good jobs. And technology has really helped make that happen. And all the training you do there at Northeast Alabama Community College, I mean, you've really helped folks, you know, to well, have a I, higher wage. You know, I, I tell students, you know, we, we have to keep the main thing about the main thing. And in industry, that 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 is extremely important. And uh, we, we often, or I, I can tell you with myself, I, sometimes I struggle with technology when technology works, it's great. And when it doesn't, then, then you, you probably need a technician or someone to troubleshoot that. And, uh, so I, I in practical applications, we, we try to throw students curveballs mm-hmm. and, uh, so that they have to think a little outside the box. Right. And uh, as far as b- being able to problem solve, I've, I've, I've said quite often to students, if, if you, you, you need to be a problem solver, mm-hmm. you've you, you got to f- find a way to be able to, to, to solve problems because engineering and 
uh, technical work like that, uh, that a lot of what we do are, is solving problems. If, mm -hmm. if you have to go ask somebody to solve the problem for you, then they probably don't need you. <laughs> that so, is that is true. <laughs> so you know uh, when you when you, you the the point you were making about the you know five days uh, of, of of no accidents, uh, <laughs> un understanding uh -huh. that that companies they, they're graded on uh, on those on those types of incidents, right. and they the uh, companies can only work for for certain. Uh, suppliers and larger companies mm -hmm. if they maintain a, a particular safety rating. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think sometimes uh, students and employees may not understand. It, it, it's important to have a safe workplace. It's, mm -hmm. it's important to operate um, systems mm -hmm. and processes safely, but it's also very important uh, from a financial standpoint to to make sure that that they're maintaining a particular level of safety um it's uh they, they, like you said those days are are going by the wayside uh there 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 are people that their sole job is to make sure that there's not no uh hazards or no, no nothing that that they go through with a checklist and check check everything off to make sure everyone's following the, the correct PPE uh, applications and uh, are d doing what they're supposed to do. It, the tour that we went on last Friday, uh, that was the first thing they did. They give us a safety vest and ear protection and eye protection before we ever even walked out of the parking lot. So That's um, pretty cool. Well, these yeah. are not your great grandfather's jobs anymore. I mean, Absolutely they're not, they're not. so different, but I got something to tell you, Dave. Now, Dave, I'm a lot older than you, so I remember when computers first came out. <laughs> okay. I and, can remember. I, I'm, I'm a lot older than what you would think. Uh, you're a young kid compared to me, but this is so funny. So I remember when the computers came out, people were first getting cell phones, they were first getting laptops and all those things. I remember people saying, oh, Donna, you're in the wrong business. Computers are going to take over the world. You're going to be part of that. I got news for you. Computers are never going to take over the world. There has to be somebody. And this is another thing I heard. Oh, Donna, those jobs are going to take jobs away from people. They've actually created more jobs because you've got to have somebody who's going to fix the laptop that I tear up. You've got to have somebody who's going to be instructional and tell you how to do these things in a more efficient area. And I mean, I'm, I'm all for it. And, and I'm going to tell you what, I'm the first one to jump up on the bandwagon for technology. Well, m m the the first degree that I held was an associate in applied science, mm -hmm. and I, I went to the instructor and wanted to get, I actually wanted to get a drafting table. I, I said, look, I said, where can I get me one of these drafting tables? And he said, do not do that. He, he said, you need to go and buy you a computer. This was in uh, 88, 80, well, no, no, let me, this is in 90. It mm -hmm. was in 90. And uh, he, he was right. Uh, you, you need, we oftentimes see drafting tables where people are rolling out plans to look at things. Mm -hmm. But outside of that, um, the, the, the days of sitting at a board drawing, uh, you, we, need, we need technical skills to be able to sketch things. Mm -hmm. But uh, everything's done on the computer now as far as from a design standpoint. Uh, and it doesn't matter. It, it bridges architectural and engineering design bridges that um, it, and CAD for the most part. A lot, a lot of our uh, our programs tend to uh, we have a lot of crossover in the instruction. So um, like my engineering technicians, they, they take uh, introduction to CAD and uh, modeling and advanced modeling. So they have a CAD sequence they go through just like what the dra drafting and design would, but they also have uh, more of the engineering type of uh, material uh, processes and strengths of materials, statics, dynamics, those types of uh, classes also. Well, Dave, you'd be real proud of me. My husband, a couple of years ago, decided, he said, we're going to build the deck. Because, I mean, we were going through this thing, the pandemic had hit, you couldn't find anybody to do, you know, the good people <laughs> were all taken up. 
And it was going to be like two years before we could get somebody out here to build a deck. So my husband said, I've got the plans. We're going to do it. And I said, we? I said, I can say you doing it, but not we. You know something? I'm able to use the saws. I'm able to use it. So these are jobs that women can do now. I'm the first oh, one cool. to say I actually enjoy building the deck. And it's a night. I promise you there's no better built deck around. My husband put so many of those screws in that. It's just unreal. If the if a tornado comes through, the deck's going to hold the house down. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> it just went together you. good. But I had fun using the saws. So he had all these different saws out there. And he said, well, we'll just go ahead and buy some saws. That's the money we're going to save doing it ourselves. So we found all these things. And I'm able to use the saws doing other things, smaller things at the house. You can build picture frames, whatever. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, you, you know, you you, you kind of alluded to the fact of uh, f females uh, working in, in certain roles, and um, I could tell you, I don't I don't know what the percentage is that I have female to male ratios in my classes, but I would say it's pretty close, half and half right now. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know, like I said, I I, I can't say for certain, but I I, I would say it's pretty close. It, it is, and and I've been to some of the um, some of the things that happened at the at the high schools at the tech schools, and there are girls in there that are just like tearing it up. I mean, you know, and they're good paying jobs. Yes. Well, you know, I I, I teach a precision measurement and print reading uh, industrial print reading class, and mm -hmm. in that class, it it's a multidiscipline class. So I have welding students, uh, drafting students, and ENT students. And uh, I had a, a couple of students that were sitting in the front and I was, I was asking them about their majors and both of them were welding, ma uh, welding majors. And it just so happened that they were female. And I, I don't, I guess as we get conditioned to, we think, you know, welding helmet and that, that might not necessarily be a, a, a job that a wo woman ne might necessarily uh, be looking for, but uh, they're they're ex not only looking for those jobs, but they're excelling in those jobs, mm -hmm. uh, regardless of of uh, male, female, what have you. Well, I'm going to tell you, there's a, a lady I know with friends. Her name is, is Sherry, and she's in the Oxford area. And so her, her name is Sherry Cable and her dad owned this, this company and he wanted, it's a welding company and the sons were not interested, but Sherry was, and she wanted the business and she tears it up. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you, she's got it going on. And so the neat thing about these jobs and, and Sherry said, and I interviewed her once and, and I said, and this is when it first came out that women were taking these jobs, you know, they, they're enjoying it. You know, and she said, well, I'm not like you where I want to walk around with a suit on all the time. Because I had this corporate job going on there. Right. And then I said, well, what do you like about it? And she said, well, it's pretty cool. She said, because basically the machine does it all for me. She said, it's not as difficult as people think it is. She said, maybe back in my dad's day, it was a difficult job. She said, but it's not. But she has this, this mind for it, it better than the sons. And the, oh. <laughs> the dad said, I'm glad Sherry took over the, the company. She's much better at it than the boys would have been. Well, you you know, it, it's funny. You meant it, when you said it, it goes, it lends itself to technology and science. Yeah. And um, so often I, I, I see that we forget, we forget yeah. how important the science behind what we're doing is. Yeah. And it, if, if they, ha if, if students have that understanding, mm -hmm. that basic understanding that they're, they're going to be successful. And uh, I, I can even you know speak from from my experience where I've I may not have thought that a particular area of science uh, that I would utilize it that much, but I can tell you as it's come back around with my t with teaching here at Northeast, there's there's areas that I was like, hey, I need to make sure I brush up on that because that that's something that, that they're going to use. Uh, whether it was uh, chem I mean, something as basic as chemistry or uh, basic material principles that I, I may not have used as much in in my field of engineering study, but seeing that they're going to use it um, a, as they develop in, in whatever they're doing.
Well, it's all in your mind frame. It's how you look at it. I had a very, very wise, two grandmothers, very wise. And so they want, they thought every woman should know how to cook. And at that time, I was a teenage girl. I wasn't really interested. So my grandmother said, you like science, don't you? And I loved science. I mean, I couldn't wait to get in science class. And she said, you know, cooking's like science. And I said, it is. Well, then I became interested. It's all in how you look at it. It's all all right. in how then I wanted to cook. I mean, it was like she said, it's measurements. That's what it's That's all right. about. It's all in the way you look at it. But man, there's so many jobs out there and the technical jobs really, because you can start out working for someone and, and be with them a long time, really prove yourself. Maybe later on, get out and do it on your own. And then own your own business. And then after that, you may retire and just be put on a retainer for customers to do training for businesses. Well, I, I know there, there there's uh, businesses in our area uh, that are that um, look to hire students in a way that they can bring them into a journeyman t- type of path okay. in, in, in their work. And uh, I'm talking about well-paying jobs uh, that can, uh, de- so that they can de- further develop uh, in whatever industry that they're working in. Um, and they're so, it's so diverse, it, 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 it's tough when you, th- when you think about it, you have a student come in here and you got five semesters that you're, you're dealing with that student. And by the time you take out your area one through four, which is your academic, uh, requirements. You only have a, a certain number of, of credit hours that you're going to be spending with that student. And uh, because, in, in you know, we we build a relationship with with students. I was uh, speaking with, with, with a young lady earlier uh, and she's within four credits of, or four classes of graduating. And I was like, wow, I can't believe that, you know, you're about to graduate. Congratulations! It's like they're your right. kids all over. Right, right. You, 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 you become close with them, especially when it's not as it's not like you have a, a student in a class, then you don't see them again. It, with technical education, you, you see that student time and time again. Uh-huh. So uh, you definitely build a relationship. Yeah, they come by and let you see that car they paid cash for because of that job <laughs> that, that they got you that, 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 That's right. <laughs> or, or or the or the kid or the vacation uh, or the uh, house. Yes, uh, you, you do you do you definitely see that. Well, Northeast has been around such a long time. It's changed a lot since 1977 when I graduated out of high school. A lot, and for then I thought it was great then. But with the addition, you guys just keep building buildings. You're going to have your own little city over there if you're not careful. Well, I know that we've got a new manufacturing facility that's going to be coming to campus. Uh, I don't know what the date is for the groundbreaking yet on that. It should be soon. Uh, I know that they've got everything approved. I already have the design on the building and uh, it's going, I'm actually going to be, the engineering technologies program that I'm, I'm involved with will be staying in the maths, uh, math, science and engineering building. Mm-hmm. It's on the front of campus, but uh, I know drafting, I think, construction science and uh, our machining, I, I think will all be located in the new manufacturing uh, building. Mm-hmm. That is so cool. All the things you guys do. Now you guys also talk, I mean, it's, it's beyond you know, how to do engineering, how to do drafting, how to do all these things. You actually talk to folks about being a team player in a business and working well with other employees and your boss too. Well, it, 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 it's part of, uh, part of like, just like you said, it's part of business and uh, employers going to uh, expect that. Uh, when I've, I talk with students in our project management, we actually take personality tests and we talk about working in teams and understanding other people's personalities right. and being able to not only uh, do your job, but be able to understand why, why different, different types of people do things different ways and Mm -hmm. when you're building a team you have to look at at people's skill sets and being able to make making those assessments Mm -hmm. and understand understanding the why i i push that in all all my classes but uh it's really eye-opening to have a little bit broader understanding of uh of not only the subject matter but why things are that way and why people in the industry are going to require you to perform a certain way. 
And uh, the the employers that are that are out there are 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 working to build a stronger workforce in 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 every area and you see it time and time again when they're talking about soft skills they want somebody that's going to show up on time stay the entire time and can pass a drug test and can there's certain basic things that they need out of an employee that uh somewhere along the way you know, I, I don't know it, it it just seems like that that those things seem like things that everyone should be doing and everyone should be practicing on a professional level. But uh, we, we still reinforce that and instill that in our students uh, to make sure that there, that there's a particular uh, benchmark. Uh, I'm a, I'm a big football fan. I love the Pittsburgh Steelers and the coach of the Pittsburgh Steelers. That's one of the things that he says, you know, the standard is the standard. And at, at, uh, Northeast, we have a particular standard mm-hmm. and we expect our, our students to uh, to meet that standard. Well, it's pretty obvious because you have businesses in this area who look to you guys for employees, potential employees. Absolutely. And it, it and it, you know, it, it it's a, it's a fine line that you have to walk because uh, I'm, I, I can, I'm glad to say that everyone that's graduating out of, out of our program is going to work, but uh, you know, in industry, they're 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 just they're they're pulling as fast as as they can graduate, mm-hmm. and uh, I mean that's that's great for the students, but uh, it's uh, it, it 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 creates uh, this vacuum where, where where we're trying to we're trying to fill fill the void. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, and uh, although the, there there is a shortage in the workforce, it, it goes back to that the statement that I made: the standard is still the standard. We're going to still we we've got to meet that. Well, you guys are, are way up there as far as your training technology and that kind of thing, but you also still believe in the old fashioned way to make it work, and that's again being there on time, you know, and and doing. Well, it's not necessarily in that job detail, you know, pick up a brain and get busy. That, that, that's right. Yeah. Do, doing what needs to be done. Mm-hmm. Uh, seeing beyond someone having to give you instruction. Um, there, there, there's times when I, when I have actually, I, I give an assignment and the, what they need to do is there. But I may not tell them A, B, C, D, you know, the, I, I had a, uh, a guy, a really smart guy that was a supervisor over me at one time. And he said, you know, you need to be able to show someone where to start and where you want them to finish. And then you have to kind of get out of the way and allow them to let uh, them do it. That's Absolutely. right. Dave, and, less than a minute uh, left in this segment. What do you need to tell folks? How can they get in contact with you? How can they find out more about Northeast Alabama Community College? Well, they can go to our website at nacc.edu, or they can uh, give me a call direct. Uh, I, is it okay for me to give my cell phone number? Mm-hmm. Sure. Okay. Uh, but you can call me direct at 256-312-9596. Uh, and although I know the, the college likes for folks to uh, to fill out a, a, a meeting, mm-hmm. uh, we use advisor track. But I, I would love love for pe- people to come see me. Uh, if Absolutely. you have a question, you're welcome to come. I'm located in the uh, Math and Science Building, and uh, I'm in room 221 on second floor. Dave, thank you so much for being on the show. If we never have enough time, you're going to have to come and say No, it time. flies right on by. <laughs> Absolutely. You take care. Look forward to seeing you next time. You too. Thank you. Okay, folks. Y'all take care. I'll be back in a few minutes with another awesome guest like this one.